morning everybody hey I am uh, lighting the way this morning because we're talking about Peter and we're in the book of 2nd Peter and we're gonna be looking in chapter 1 verses 12 through 21 this morning so 2nd Peter 12 through 21 and uh, Peter talks in here about this idea that it's really important to pay attention to the prophets because the prophets are like a shining light in a dark place like they show the way for the path ahead like i love to go hiking and exploring and have done a lot of hiking through uh dark places hiked into uh this last year kayla and i hiked into hell's canyon uh at night down a river canyon and we were using headlamps and lights and and without the light, we had no idea where the trail was ahead of us. I mean, it was just absolutely pitch black. Um, same thing, we've, we've done a lot of hiking and we go through some old railroad train tunnels. And once you go in there and you turn the light off, it is absolutely pitch black. And so without the light, you have no way of knowing where the road is ahead of you, where the path is, what the obstacles are, what dangers are ahead. And so that's the imagery that you need to have in mind, the picture that you need to have in mind when we think about what Peter say is, uh, says about the prophets. He says the prophets are like this. They are like this bright shining light into dark places and and so they light up the path. And so the um and he's going to talk a little bit more about what the prophets said and how they said it and why he is so um passionate and committed to do what he feels like God's called him to do. So, let me uh throw a little real light on the subject here and get this out of our way and uh Let's jump in and pray this morning for uh, our time together. And then we're going to jump into Second Peter. So let's pray. Man, God, we love you. We thank you so much for your word. And uh, it, we do uh, say that your word is a light unto our feet. It is. And uh, just like Peter says, the prophets uh, light up our way. Their teaching, their instruction, the view that you gave them of the future um, and the things to come. Uh, just gives us um, light and understanding to know what's going on and what was coming. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would be with us this morning. Help us keep growing and learning from your word so that we become uh, more and more like your son. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're in Second Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 12 through 21. So here we go. Ready? Get some reading goggles on here so I can see what I'm looking at. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. Second Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 12. goes like so. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things. What things is he talking about? If you missed yesterday, make sure you go back and watch it. We talked about your faith shake, the way you're going to supplement your faith and build your faith and keep staying healthy and strong in your faith. And he goes through and gives this great big list of things that are important to do. And so here he's picking it up saying, I'm going to always remind you about these things. Even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth, you have been taught. And it's only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave the, this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I'm gone. Verse 16. For we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when we received honor, when he received honor and glory from the uh, God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on that holy mountain. Because of that experience, we have, been, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns, and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, nope. those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. So, Peter 
is doing a couple of things here. He's just really hammering like back to basics, back to basics, back to basics. Like I'm gonna just keep reminding you to grow strong in your faith, to uh, endure uh, the outward persecution, to endure the inward uh, uh, attacks on your faith and what you believe. And even though right now you're standing firm, even though right now you're doing well, he's like, it's super clear to me that what God's called me to do is to just keep reminding you of the basics, like keep calling you back to grow in your faith, keep calling you back to uh, add those supplements in and increase your faith day by day. Um, and and then he goes on to just talk about how the the reason he has such confidence is not only because of his time with Jesus, not only because uh, of his uh, learning and understanding, but because he was there when Jesus uh, was uh, received glory from heaven and God spoke out audibly in front of them and said that this was his son and whom he was well pleased. And then he saw him glorified and ascend to heaven. He's like, it, it, there's, there's no bigger confidence booster than what we saw on that amazing mountain. And because of that, uh, nothing is gonna shake my faith. Nothing could possibly ever get me off track. And, and so he's trying to pass on some of that confidence, some of that strength, some of that uh, commitment. And, and then he goes and says, you know, like one of the ways I can do that, one of the ways that I can pass that faith on, that confidence on, is to encourage you to keep going back to the prophets, keep looking at what they said, keep reading the words of the prophets, trusting that they didn't come up with that stuff on their own. This was all given to them by God. And and when you read these stories about um, what God had told them to say, the warnings God uh, gave them to give to their people, the affirmations that God gave them to give to their people. Like God continually in the, in the Old Testament time spoke through prophets and, and he gave them these messages to correct their people where they were off, encourage their people, uh, his people where they were on track, um, uh, call them to be ready for things that were coming ahead of times. And then he also gave them a lot of clear messaging about who Jesus was going to be, when he was going to come, what kind of things would you uh, know, uh, see coming so that you would know it was him. And, and so those are faith building stories to be able to go back and go look at what God was giving them, look at the instruction God was giving them, and then look at how it played out just as as God had said. And so he just says those things are like a light in a dark tunnel. When you turn the light off, you've got you're stumbling around trying to figure out how to work your way through, navigate. You, the help of others isn't really helpful, but all of a sudden you shine a bright light in there and it's really easy. You can just see right where you're going. He's like learning and knowing the prophets is like having that bright light. And so I just think that's a good reminder. I also think that um, the vast majority of Christians um, probably couldn't even name most of the prophets or even probably five, I don't know, um, much less know really who they were, when in history they uh, kind of lived, what was their specific kind of calling and direction that they spoke into, um, what message was God giving them to, at that particular time and that place for those people. I think most people are just really uh, out of touch with um, what the prophets said and who they spoke to. And so that'd be something to definitely dig into and, and uh, learn more about so that you've got a good light shining in your life to guide you along uh, your journey. So um, that's the stuff that was really sticking out to me this morning as I was going through that. The other thing that I thought about as I was going through this is the idea of uh, where he talks about in the very beginning that... Um, I'm going to keep reminding you about these things. And so he was talking about the ways to supplement your faith, uh, the be ready to endure persecution, perseverance. Don't, don't get swayed by false teachers. Like he's like, I'm going to keep reminding you about the basics. Um, even though I know you're already doing them. And I was just thinking about how, um, uh, I wrestled growing up. All of my boys wrestled at different times when they were little kids and did little kids wrestling. And, 
one of the things that you learn uh, at every year wrestling is you always go through the basics and same in any sport whether it's basketball football like whenever when you show up one of the things you always do is just drill 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 on basics whether it's stance or how to shoot the ball or position or just uh, in sports they're called fundamentals and it doesn't matter what the sport is every good coach always wants a team that is just rock solid in the basics the fundamentals and people can get frustrated with that because they can be like, hey, I already learned all this stuff. I already know it. And every good coach knows that it doesn't matter how good you know it. I need it to be like imprinted on your uh, body and muscle memory so that we, it's just second nature to you. You just know the position, the stance, the move, the pass, the, you know, everything, the right form without even thinking about it. It's such a second nature thing. And, and that's kind of Peter's approach to making disciples is he's trying to make sure and say, Hey, like, I'm just going to keep teaching you the fundamentals. I'm going to keep teaching you the basics. I want to make this stuff so solid. I want you to be, I know you're standing firm in it right now, but I want you more than firm. I want this like perfect muscle memory when it comes to these different elements of your faith journey. So anyways, that was another little thing that was just popping in my mind as I was thinking about it this morning. Hey, we've got all kinds of peeps on here with us this morning. Ingrid, good morning, and Judy and Matt, good morning, and Carol, and Miss Sarah Nelson, good morning to you. And we've got uh, uh, Guillermo, which looks like a friend of Zach and Daisy. So good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on here. We've got Tammy, good morning. And we've got Alyssa and Eileen and Kathy and Jeremy. And I can't see everybody else here on my phone. It says there's uh, 26 other people, something, a bunch more people on there watching. So good morning to everybody. I hope you guys have an awesome Wednesday and your day is amazing. Get some light shining on your, your path today. Um, Stretch yourself, dig in, and read uh, a little bit about one of the prophets and start seeing what kind of light that might shine in your life to help you stay on track today. So let me pray for us, and I'll get you guys off and running on this Wednesday morning. All right, let's pray. Man, God, we love you. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord, for um, the prophets and the light that they uh, shine, not only the way that they helped the people um, that, that you sent them to help, but... Uh, here so many years later, uh, Lord, their instruction and wisdom and direction and counsel still gives us um, uh, help for our walk today. And it helps us to learn from the mistakes of others and learn from the ways that they were doing it right. And so help us to just keep learning and growing from those things, Lord. Um, and I just pray you'd be with us on this day. Draw us closer to you and continue to help us. Um,